about this time uh, I was a member of the Los Angeles Astronomical Society and started making a 12 and a half inch telescope. It'd be an F5 and I had intended fully to mount this also by sphere mounting. In the hope of being able to use a, a production sphere I bought this 30 inch diameter butyrate uh, light globe which was used in architecturally out in large parking lots. I hoped to use that directly but actually the surface was not good enough for the sphere that I needed so I set this up to uh, to make uh, make new tooling. Along the diameter is a, a sponge rubber that's glued on to the major diameter to set the flange. The top sur surface was uh, waxed and then a plaster a plaster splash made across the entire top surface and up to the f the flange that I put in. A manila hemp fiber uh, impregnated with plaster was then uh, smeared over the surface to give it some uh, some fiber strength so so it could be handled. The plaster cast is here shown removed from the sphere. I cast another smaller plaster which you see on the inside and then I used uh, salt as an abrasive to start grinding the two the way you would classically would grind a telescope mirror. I subsequently changed the sand which was much faster and roughed out a, a good hemisphere with all uh, the high points uh, in the surface being ground ground away smoothly. Here I am shown uh, grinding by pushing the the plaster insert uh, back and forth and that, gr that grinds away the surface. Here the sphere, the hemisphere has been ground quite true and I've got a scale on here to measure the diameter. There are still a few holes and pockets in the plaster but these will be filled up in the conventional lacquer uh, sanding and filling process. This is another view showing a straight edge set across the flange and then measuring the depth to the center. Basically this is checking to make sure that the flange diameter is uh, within an acceptable limit of the actual uh, half diameter size. In this view the hemisphere has been sanded and primed uh, sanded out again and then a, a body automotive body filler has been filled in to fill in the cracks and the scratches and the digs and this will later be all sanded out to make a good smooth surface. In this view the tool has been basically finished. It's all lacquered. Uh, it's, it's real smooth and it's uh, waxed and it's basically is ready for plaster. What I'll show next are some of the other tooling to make the tube assembly and then we'll do the fiberglass later. In this case for the tool assembly the armature was set up. Uh, this time I intended to do the full diameter of the tube. So I set up a working bench, set up a couple of bearings with the uh, pipe threads uh, attaching the armature structure and then floating it in a fixture so it's free to rotate. The tube master model will be built up on this armature. This is another view of the armature assembly. Onto the assembly I apply a wire or hard wire screen to actually provide a surface to build up on. This is a view of the armature ready to start the plaster layup. The template is set up slightly inside the final position as a guide to make sure that I lay up a sufficient amount of plaster. The template is then reset to the exact location and then the build up is slowly made and the, by rotating the armature the template does squeegees off the excess plaster and you can start to see the form taking shape. Here you see the basic form has been turned and the, uh, the smaller ripples and scratch details those will be cleaned up under the normal uh, sanding and lacquering process. This view shows the the assembly basically completed and, uh, and sanded and polished out. It's ready to make the uh, master tooling which will be in plaster. This is the setup shown ready to take a cast off of, uh, off of the plaster. At least I'm ready to start making the, build, the armature to, to contain the plaster. The, uh, the ends of the plaster are located by putting in a small template and where the, the tube will interface with a sphere, I've scribed in an accurate diameter where I want the trim line and I've set some tape in there on that line 
so that when I make my cast, the, the imprint of that tape will should give me my trim line. This is a close-up showing the flange where the tape is set on the desired trim line. This is a view now where the plaster has already been cast against the surface, and then it was followed by uh, layers of impregnated uh, manila hemp and plaster to give some fiber strength. And the whole part is all uh, smoothed over the entire half diameter of this tube. This view shows the part after it has set and the, uh, the mold and the dam uh, supporting details have been shown removed. Subsequently the form was rotated uh, while still on the tool and then the same process was duplicated for the other side. In this case this made a two-piece mold in which the, uh, the interfacing flanges fit exactly because they were cast off of the same detail. This shows the cast removed from the master model. This view, view shows the shells or the molds reassembled in the proper location. This will be the actual tool assembly configuration when the fiberglass is already laid up. And this is another view of the same assembly showing the continuity of the surface. In this view, the, uh, the plaster is sealed with a lacquer uh, sanding sealer and uh, these will be uh, sanded and smoothed uh, then this will be make the actual surface for the returning now to start the fiberglass layout from these tools uh, the original hemisphere is set up again and the actual trim line which is a fraction of an inch below the F, the flange is marked off with tape so that there's a tape imprint on the proper trim line here again it's uh, it's, it's set in place by locating that center sphere and dragging a radius to mark that point. Here a white uh, gel color coat has been painted in to the part of the, the tool which has been previously uh, waxed uh, a PVC, a PVA poly or parting, parting agent and then waxed again and then the gel coat on top of that. After the gel coat layers of uh, fiberglass cloth and uh, fiberglass mat it had been laid up to uh, to get a build up of about a tenth of an inch in thickness. With the first shell completed and removed the tool was then uh, cleaned up and then set up again to make the other side of the shell. Now this side would have the tube assembly uh, flared off of it so in the center of the sphere to the exactly the same trim diameter a tape line is set up to demark the trim line for the tube assembly uh, below that you will see a flattened area that's been laid in and uh, built up to a smooth transition to uh, give me a clean surface to make an access port from the side. This will be visible better later. In this view the gel coat has been applied to this assembly and then the fiberglass uh, re resin and fiber layup made to build up to the same thickness again. In this view all the tooling is shown uh, set up uh, that make to make these parts. The next start on the tube assembly. In this view the tools are, are waxed to a high polish. The PVA uh, parting agent is applied and then it's re-waxed again. The tube assembly uh, master tools are then set up to start the layup. In this view I believe we have a uh, gel coat has been already applied. Here are the, the tube half shells have been completed with it. Just ready ready for trim now. This shows the the tooling with the fiberglass set in place. In this view the tube assembly the excess uh, fiberglass has been trimmed a net to the edge of the tool. Without removing the fiberglass the two shells are then reassembled and they're strapped together here and then working on the inside makes a uh, basically a lap seam to make it one whole complete assembly. Here we see the tube assembly has been removed from the plaster and the upper half shell assembly has also been removed. This is the first stack up of the fiberglass shells assemblies to get a general view of what the appearance is going to be like. Work was then begun on to build the armature to make the uh, mirror mounting bulkhead assembly. For this the uh, plywood was set up 
and again uh, the same armature in the center to make the pocket for the mirror assembly. You can see the template in place that will drag in the shape that's required. Again we see the build up of the plaster onto the armature and then we rate, rotate the template to sweep out the shape. You can see uh, the fillet and the upper uh, dome assembly starting to, to, to match. This is the completed form of the, uh, the, of the bulkhead, bulkhead assembly. I'm, we'll be doing some additional modifications to add small features that are necessary. This is the completed master model. You noted small features have been added in plaster uh, or small pieces of masonite to put recessed flats in for the supporting channels and angles. The exterior beveled fiberglass will actually be part of the flange assembly that 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 bevel edge and this the spherical segment in the center will mate to the inside of the back shell and that'll all be bonded together by a fiberglass resin paste mixture. With the uh, fiberglass layup to the surface uh, is allowed to set up and then onto that are located uh, was located a plywood bulkhead ring that's uh, bonded in so that that would be a place if I ever wanted to add additional fasteners I can drill right straight through and get in the plywood. Uh, this also has been uh, you know, subsequently holes drilled and locating various uh, uh, threaded nut, nut assemblies so that I can attach all the hardware. This is the business side of the this is a, again the finished fiberglass assembly you can see how all the little details, the little pockets that were added in the master now come out as uh, good clearance holds for my adjusting uh, mounting hardware, adjusting screws and centering centering screws. Additional uh, threaded holes are put in place to take or to receive uh, weight counterbalances. This is a, a picture of an earlier point <clears throat> where the uh, bulkhead was dropped in place for a check fit. It's returning now to the assembly of the uh, basic telescope itself. Uh, you recall this was the original stack up and you can see the excess uh, fiberglass that is outside the trim lines. Uh, the fiberglass shells were then trimmed net to their exact trim lines and in this view you can see how the parts uh, basically just drop in place. The trim line of the tube you notice that was on a, a pure diameter and the trim line on the sphere was itself a pure diameter and being the same diameter they nest uh, basically perfectly. To make the assembly the original tooling for the tube was set up to contain the fiberglass shell that you just saw trimmed in place. The shell is in place and trimmed and that leaves an excess surface on the plaster which would become the seat to hold the hemisphere shell so that that can get get bonded in place and be held accurately. Working in this position the upper shell is held by the plaster tool and I have access to the inside where I can now put a lap seam to join the tube assembly to the upper hemisphere assembly. Here you can see the uh, lap seam has been laid in place on the inside to tie the two parts together.